first part will be speeches followed by an opportunity to have one-on-one -on -one interviews and we'll do a group photo as well as any other photos that are required. The second part will be a formal ride program happening immediately to the east of us here on Jane Street, at which time the media are welcome to cover the ride program and attend the ride truck as well. We are honoured to have three speakers with us this morning who will provide messaging and their perspective around impaired operation. I would like to thank each of them for being with us today. YRP Deputy Chief Kevin McCloskey, MAD York Region Board Member and our Victim Services Coordinator Kathy Mitchell, and YRP Retired Superintendent Graham Turrell to provide us a victim's perspective. Deputy, the mic is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, Todd. Uh, Todd and I started 25-odd uh, you know, years ago on the same platoon, and at that point in time, uh, Todd uh, was an advocate for uh, fighting this fight against impaired driving, and 25 years later, he's still here doing it. So thank you very much, Todd, uh, for all that you do and for putting this event together. Uh, good morning to all of you, uh, and on behalf of Chief Jim McSween and the executive leadership team at York Regional Police, and in fact all 2,400 members of York Regional Police, I want to thank all of you for being here uh, and uh, extend uh, a special appreciation for the support uh, you know, in this fight against impaired driving. We're here because uh, on the heels of yesterday's provincial announcement uh, for the festive uh, ride program. York Regional Police is launching their own regional program uh, for the same mission, the same cause that all of our police services across Ontario are fighting. Uh, but before I get into uh, the specifics, there's a, a group of people that I want to thank. Uh, in particular, Kathy Mitchell, thank you so much for everything you do at MAD. Uh, I want to thank retired Superintendent Graham Turrell for being here along with your family. Um, you know, for those of you who have been here before, you'll know that uh, Graham's uh, son-in-law was tragically killed by an impaired driver back in 2017. I also want to thank uh, Chief Jeremy Watts from uh, York Region Paramedic Services, Chief uh, Andrew Zavanitas from Vaughan Fire Services, uh, Vanessa Sodden from the York Region Transportation Group, Linda Foster, who is the tra uh, Trauma Coordinator from South Lake uh, Regional Hospital Health Centre, and Bob and Ann, who I got to meet this morning, uh, the co-founder of Accident Awareness. Thank you all for being here. I sincerely appreciate your efforts and your work to try to end impaired driving. I also want to thank all the commanding officers from the Road Safety Unit uh, at York Regional Police who bring out the Enhanced Ride Program and all of the officers, uh, many of which you see here today, uh, for their work in this space. You know, all officers across the front lines, uh, not just in York Region, but across the province and in fact across the country, are working to fight against impaired driving. And there's a final group I want to I want to thank, and that's every citizen. Every citizen who has or is prepared to call in a driver that they suspect is impaired while operating a motor vehicle. Every person who's called a ride for their friend or a loved one that's had too much to drink or has consumed drugs. And everyone who has made that critical decision to put their own keys away when they realize that they have no business behind the wheel of a motor vehicle. Your efforts have made our roads safer and in fact your efforts have likely saved lives. Thank you. So I've been policing in York Region for 25 years and what I can tell you is that it hasn't gotten any easier to go to someone's home and knock on their door and tell them that their loved one's been killed by an impaired driver. Nothing about technology or AI or otherwise has made that any easier, let me tell you. It hasn't been easier for members of MAD either. They continue this work. All right? It isn't easier for people like Graham who have lost family members and loved ones to the senseless act of impaired driving. For them to stand up here in front of these cameras and in front of all of you and repeat their story of grief, their story of sadness, anger, and the emptiness that comes with it. But they do it year in and they do it year out and we thank you for that. 
we repeat this message anywhere and everywhere that we can. You know, so 25 years ago when I started, I was optimistic that I'd see the end of impaired operation at some point in time in my career. And while I still have some years left to go, uh, to this point, I'm wrong. My optimism 25 years ago hasn't panned out. We still have a job to do. And in fact, this year alone in York Region, we've lost three people on our roads to impaired drivers and dozens of others, many dozens of others have been injured. As I speak to you right now, there's a man fighting for his life in hospital. He was hit by an impaired driver earlier in the week uh, right here in the city of Vaughan. In September of last year, uh, not far from where we're standing, a 21-year-old man made the poor decision to get behind the wheel of a car while impaired, and unfortunately a 55-year-old person lost their life as a result of that. This place here today was chosen for that reason. Right? We're trying to bring uh, you know, awareness to this, and we're trying to bring it home to a place where it actually happened, not far from where you're standing. For all of us at York Regional Police, it's shocking and it's appalling that, I'm, that we're still standing here having this conversation and that we're still out having to enforce in this space. Frankly, it's, it's quite beyond belief. Um, you know, in October of this year, uh, our investigators from our major, major collision unit were investigating uh, a scene of, a, of, an, uh, of an impaired driver who, who ran through a red light at nearly double the speed limit and struck another car that then left the road and struck two young girls on their way home from work. Both of those girls have life-altering injuries. And if that wasn't enough, when we closed the road down and had barriers up and while our officers were investigating, a car broke through those barriers. They stopped that car and arrested yet another driver for impaired driving. It's really quite hard to believe. Those are just a few examples of the 1,100 instances of arrests of impaired driving in 2024 year to date. And I want to say that again, that's 1,100 arrests just this year alone for impaired operation. And while I'm happy to say that that's a marginal decrease from 2023, one is one too many. So 1,100 is 1,100 too many. Nothing's worth this risk. And that's why year round, and in particular during the festive season, York Regional Police steps up their efforts for the Enhanced Ride Program. Because while thousands of people may still choose to drive while impaired by drugs or alcohol, we are not gonna weaken in our resolve to take every impaired driver off the road that we can. So that when innocent people need to get from point A to point B, they do, and they arrive home to work, to their friends and loved ones' homes safely. We're relying on our partners to help us find innovative ways to educate our community. And this includes our youth who make up many of the drivers on our road today. I'm proud of programs like Party, which is prevent alcohol and risk-related trauma in youth. It's an initiative we share with South Lake Hospital and York Region Paramedic Services. This program uses simulations uh, to show high school students the harsh reality of the impacts and effects of impaired driving. You know, so when parents and teachers and institutions support these endeavors, it still restores my hope, the hope I had 25 years ago, that the number of arrests, the number of collisions, and the number of lives destroyed will stop. But until then, we know that every time we arrest a impaired driver, we know we may be saving a life, and that's why we're here. And that's why I thank you very much for supporting us in the work we're doing. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Deputy. Next, we will hear from our incredible partners, Mad, Kathy. Good morning. On behalf of Mad York Region, I'd like to thank York Regional Police for inviting us to participate in the 2024 ride kickoff. As Mad kicks off our red ribbon campaign. <clears throat> 
Thank you to all of the frontline workers participation here today as well. We all have the same purpose and goal in mind to keep the citizens of York Region and the people traveling through York Region safe. Each year MAD kicks off <clears throat> sorry. Each year MAD kicks off the festive season with our red ribbon campaign. The ribbon is a reminder and a tribute to our victims that have been killed or injured by an impaired driver. The red ribbon also serves as a reminder to not drive impaired by drugs or alcohol. This year, we once again have partnered with York Region Works Department and York Transit to get the message out to not drive impaired by having posters on the back of the buses through 20 buses throughout York Region. <clears throat> Impaired driving is one of the number one causes of death and injury on our roads in Canada. In York Region, there have been numerous victims of impaired driving, as the deputy mentioned. <coughs> Excuse me. T to name some that have a face, Terry Calloway, a mom out for a run in her community, killed by an impaired driver. Daniel, Harry, and Millie Neville Lake enjoying a day with their grandparents and great-grandmother. Gary Neville speed, spending time with his three grandchildren. Ashley Fogel, my niece, on her way to a concert with her best friend Alyssa Blight. Stuart Al Ellis driving to work to provide for his young growing family. The people that make the decision to drive impaired killing or injuring these and all other victims showed a blatant disregard to society and to the people of York Region. It is MAD's mission to stop impaired driving and to support victims of this violent crime. MAD York Region is made up of a group of, with, of, a group of compassionate, dedicated volunteers that work tirelessly to achieve this mission. At this time of year, children are busy making wishes. If I could have a Christmas wish come true, it would be for every victim of impaired driving to not have to suffer as they do, and that there not be any more victims of impaired driving. So please, throughout this festive season, plan ahead, arrange for a safe ride home, call a cab, take a bus, spend the night. When you do wake up in the morning, if you have spent the night, Make sure you are sober and safe to drive. No matter how you do it, please save someone the pain caused by impaired driving, an impaired driving crash, and do not drive impaired. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Kathy. <clears throat> Superintendent Graham Turrell, will now give a victim's statement. And if you hear the helicopter over top, uh, they are doing a flyby. They couldn't land today due to, obviously, uh, uh, other reasons, but Graham Turrell. Thanks, Doug. Good morning. Uh, as you can see, my grandsons are here. They got the day off of school because uh, we told them we were coming down to talk about Daddy, so they were quite happy to be here and uh, help us get the message out about uh, reducing impaired driving. As Todd and Deputy McCloskey have said, uh, my name is Graham Turrell. I'm a retired superintendent from YRP. Uh, in my uh, 37 years, I've done my fair share of arrests for impaired. I've unfortunately done uh, notifications of next of kin and been to some very serious accidents that are a result of impaired driving. At no point did I ever feel or think that I would become a victim of impaired driving. Um, unfortunately, on November 13th, uh, 2017, this became a reality. Uh, I was still working at the time. My wife and I were away at a conference uh, when we got a message from my daughter that uh, Stuart had been killed in a car accident and appears to be an impaired driver. This, as you can imagine, is very traumatic to us. We are thousands of miles away from her and can't help her. We had the one grandson who is 14 months old at the time and two days before we left uh, my daughter let us know that she was pregnant. Uh, she was six weeks pregnant with uh, 
my second grandson here. This, as you can imagine, sent our family into turmoil. Uh, my daughter was pregnant. Uh, she was a high risk with hyperemesis, uh, so she did not have an easy pregnancy. Now throw the grief that she has to deal with. On top of that, uh, we as a family took them into our uh, uh, our hold, so to speak, and we did it no matter what, they're always going to be your kids. So we did what we could to help our family. Um, it's been wonderful that we've gotten to know our grandchildren this way. However, it's very, very unfortunate that it had to be these circumstances that brought it about. Stuart Ellis uh, was a wonderful man. He was 28 years old when he was killed. As Kathy said, he was on his way to work that day, 10 to 6 in the morning, a Monday morning. Everyone expects impaired driving to take effect on a weekend or a Friday. This was a Monday morning. He was on his way to work. He had just switched jobs to provide for his family, a better opportunity for he and his family. He was heading down Highway 48 from Davis Drive and was struck almost head on by a vehicle coming over the crest of a hill. And that vehicle was traveling at over 200 kilometers an hour when it struck Stewart. The debris field for the accident was enormous. Stewart was left to was not found for 10 minutes. He had gone into a ditch. He'd spun out into a ditch and he died alone in his vehicle. Um, Passerbys eventually came by and found him and tried to give him the assistance that he could. Sadly, he died uh, in the vehicle. The accused person at this time was a young 19-year-old who was not a stranger to being uh, arrested, unfortunately, for impaired. Uh, but this time he was impaired not only by alcohol but by drugs. He was far exceeding the legal limit by drugs and he had other uh, non-prescription medication in the system. Uh, we now had to deal with the whole process, not only the court process but the grieving process. Uh, unfortunately my wife and I, we had to uh, change our lifestyle and our plans for our future to help out our daughter. My wife had to take early retirement in order to help my daughter out because of her grief and her pregnancy illness. Um, our life changed. I won't say it's for the better on, other than the fact that we got to know our kids, our grandkids, but our life plans changed, our future changed, and it's one of those things you would not wish on anybody else who to suffer through and have to deal with during a time of crisis, during a time in their career when they're planning for the things that you hope to do, that we all work towards but cannot do. We realize that there's going to be a lot of... We've been listening to York Regional Police launching their annual holiday ride campaign in Vaughan, encouraging everyone to have a safe holiday season and to not drive impaired.